right so you know to do so much of work uh, to be consistent in what you are thinking towards and achieving kind of uh, you know uh, what do you say it's, it's very 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 hard work right? how do you motivate yourself on a daily basis or you know how, how do you do that so you know probably uh, first of all how does your 24 hours looks like and uh, you know uh, and how does you motivate yourself every single day okay so before covid after covid because now i stay at home <laughs> but uh, i think before covid happened uh, it involved a lot of travel because we worked across the country and uh, i'm constantly trying to meet more and more people talk about the work you're doing so uh, yeah i think with the lockdown i think my 24 hours have completely changed no two days looked the same uh, for me one day we are having certain meetings talking to new clients second day i'm doing site visits and visiting schools so it's very very diverse uh, the way my day looks like i cannot uh, do that uh, i i cannot put it in more way but uh, after the lockdown we do a daily huddle uh, daily stand up in the morning when the team gets together and we talk about the work that we're doing the projects that we've picked up what are the new things we can do and um, i think rest of the day goes in uh, talking to people or working on proposals presentations brainstorming on ideas uh, within team we've started a lot of experiments a lot of projects that we can cater to with the changing times um yeah and uh, i do try to find some time for myself uh, to read or exercise or maybe sometimes just binge watch <laughs> yeah so so i was coming to that so you know what uh, uh, health is very important right so and what do you suggest for somebody who is an entrepreneur in this area what is the importance of that so um, i mean take it with a pinch of salt right like i will tell you from my perspective um, so i feel as soon as my entrepreneurship journey started my hair started to grow <laughs> i actually happened to cause stress right there's just the ups and downs that you go through in the journey sometimes i mean you do have a support system but you're also trying to prove to the world that yes i'm doing good so you will not be very comfortable talking to everybody um i mean my parents have been very supportive but sometimes i feel i need to prove themselves so when i'm stuck to the problem i might not be very comfortable going to them um the team is there to support you but you know you're scared that if you are low will that take away the energy from your team as well so then this is you're just bottled up inside with all the stress that's going on uh, so i think what really worked for me was i did, i went to vipassana last year vipassana is a meditation technique i've always been a strong believer of mindfulness and meditation but uh, i could never sit for more than 15 minutes at one place <laughs> right like i could not put my thoughts uh, i could not quiet in my mind Uh, so I mainly wanted to go to Vipassana to learn the technique of, of meditation. I think it's been it has been very transformative for me. I am I can keep my calm. I think it has. I mean, an external person might not be able to see or tell the change, but I feel um, I'm a lot more calm in my head. I can think more objectively, more rationally, uh, and I even now like. So sometimes you're so stressed, and you know that you're stressed, and you cannot do anything about it. So that is when I feel like meditation really helps. You can just sit down for fifteen, twenty minutes, or an hour, whatever you're comfortable. So like in the past two months, like whenever I've sat down for meditation, I've just enjoyed it a lot. So I do that on a regular basis, not not like a compulsion, but just because uh-huh. I enjoy doing it. <laughs> nice, and I know talking about mind, right? So. You got to keep your mind with new information, with with other people's learning, right? And and as you said, so what what books that you read and what has inspired you, and uh, and what is the importance of reading books? For you? Yeah, so I feel like um, because I started this very early in my career, I feel two of my best ways how I learn is from other people. One is uh, through my mentors because they're they have. so experienced they have seen a lot of startups when they learn uh, so i take guidance from my mentors and second is through books 
to right all of these successful people or even not successful people right they put their learnings of their lifetime into these few pages so i feel that uh, books give me a lot of insight uh, i have been reading non fiction for the past 5 years <laughs> i've stopped reading fiction i should get back to it uh, one of my favorites is the hard thing about hard things i started reading that book right after i graduated uh, i could not move beyond a few pages uh, i read the same, like i completed the book after i picked the book same book after 3 years when i was one year into the startup and i could relate to every single page and uh, there were few learnings that we directly came and applied in our company and it really worked for us so i i learned from that book that the culture in the organization is very important and of course you when you read a book you pick up the things that you want to and you filter out the things that doesn't really work for you so i'm not saying that when i read zero to what i everything that works for the other entrepreneur will work for you as well but you need to learn and filter and see what works for you um so yeah i just make sure i read at least a few pages every day making it a making it a part of my uh, daily schedule yeah. because you will never find time to <laughs> read books <laughs> otherwise nice and you have been mentioning about this again and again mentorship i would like to yeah. i mean trust me i cannot even emphasize to the fact this lot of startup when they start when even think of even freelancing right i feel the mentorship is should be required there as well anything that you do something of your own mentorship is required according to me what i but a lot of people are people are not taking that i would like to take your help in you know your experience what has this mentorship done for you and if the mentorship would not have been there where would you have where would your company can be, right can you can you help me with this i cannot ima- even imagine but um, yeah i feel one of the biggest things that mentors have done or like the thing that i love the most about mentorship is uh, mentors don't tell you to do things they don't tell you to do i think you should do this they will always be like they will ask the right question so every time i go to them with a problem or even to just give general updates they will just keep questioning me and uh, i don't know these are so smart people <laughs> they they ask the right questions they help you figure out your own blind spots and they let you come up with solutions uh, so i think they have helped me on a very personal level as well to grow but also to give direction to the organization um and uh, and just give you that confidence that we have your back i think it's a huge huge uh, sort of uh, motivation and yeah <laughs> so so i mean can you imagine your company to be at the stage that you are without mentorship oh i think we we would have died long back if we didn't have our mentors <laughs> <laughs> that kind of important to have definitely because see at the end of the day we are in a uh, you know uh, especially we are in a path of self growth as well as the organization so first the self growth comes and then the business development happens right business development if it happens and there is no self growth the business will collapse right away <laughs> and mentorship plays a huge role thanks for putting it but, so, but yeah. i'll just um, add a little bit here Sure, sure. So, see, mentorship doesn't have to be a very formal mentorship, right? It doesn't have to be who is like twenty years elder to you. It could be your friend, it could be your parent, it could be anyone. But uh, it is you who have to find like someone that you really trust and really look up to for suggestions. Uh, it might just be like a, you know, someone that you just brainstorm ideas with. So we don't have to limit ourselves in the formal words and channels of how things work. That's it. Thank you so much. So, uh, you know, this is uh, this is a stage. Entrepreneurship is a step where uh, you are a lone solar like kind of stuff, right? And uh, but yeah, obviously you come along with a way that uh, that helps you at every point of time. But I would like to understand what has been uh, the family support, the importance of family support in your area because. Uh, it requires uh, i mean this is a non profit organization that is fine uh, this is something that you serve other people that is also i mean that is it's one of the you know wonderful idea that what we can start with but what kind of family support has helped you 
or uh, how much it is important to gain that time by a family support so um, when i started this out full time my parents did not uh, i would say were very not, were not very happy with what i was doing uh, and it came completely from their concern for my career uh a lot of people question why did you even go to iit if you had to do this why did you waste this week questions like that right and uh, it can bring you down or you have to or it can make you stronger so i think my family has questioned me why you are doing this in fact when i took this venture full time i had to give a proper pitch to my brother as to why i am doing this uh i cannot even sell my company and you know like questions like that but it was very nice that we, ha- we i had somebody to sort of like ask these questions because i know that these are the people who actually care for me and they're not asking because they hate me they are asking them because they're concerned about what i'm trying to do uh my parents have been super supportive of whatever i want to do i mean they will tell me once in a while maybe today should go for an mba <laughs> but uh, I think what I do, they support it a lot. Uh, uh, but yeah, they keep questioning me once in a while, and uh, sometimes I feel uh, like they are the people who, like, when I'm thinking of, I keep my organization ahead of me. But I know that my family is thinking of me as well. So I think it's good to have a support system like that. Uh, but I would say. Uh, don't be dependent on that right like this entire motivation and energy has to come from inside uh, and uh, uh, support system or not uh, you should have that strong determination to keep going forward so whenever anyone's questioning me i question myself once again and so i get asked every month why are you doing this right people just don't understand and uh, when you get asked so many times you also question yourself maybe i'm on, not on the right path and if so i actually went down that spiral once and then i just thought to myself if these people can influence my thoughts and i'm not so determined about what i want to do so <laughs> then i told myself to you know i keep around uh, i keep myself surrounded by people who um uh, question me yet sort of think about the idea that i'm doing it's fantastic in fact you pushed it across so well because you get objection right from there but yeah you got to fight for it because you have a cause in your mind right yeah <laughs> great so what is the most difficult task what is the most challenging part that you faced during expansion of your business expansion of your organization now uh, probably can you can you help us with top 3 challenges that uh, that was the most uh, you know could have been a show stopper but you kind of overcame that So when we were trying to scale, we had a product market fit. There was a huge demand. One of the challenges we faced was uh, maintaining the quality while you scale. It is very uh, difficult to scale with the same quality with optimization unless you have a strong foundation. So when we were trying to scale, things started to break because we were not a typical tech startup who could scale at a very, um, uh, you know. Uh, at an exponential scale uh so we were growing but we were still not scaling and we went deeper and tried to understand why is that happening so we took a pause we took a we took good three four months while we were building paper to stop it in stop our operation but we realized the gaps in the the way we were working so what takes you to come from 0 to 1 will not take you from 1 to 100 so you have to make certain changes while you're scaling uh so i think one of the first uh, sort of uh, challenge that we faced while scaling was put the processes in place and find those gaps which need to be changed uh, the second biggest point was uh, even if you're able to raise money for a first i mean the biggest challenge i'm keeping money apart <laughs> money is the most important thing but even if you raise money if you just hire a lot of people at the same time you might lose the essence of what you're doing so having a proper hiring plan to maintain uh, the culture the spirit that you would have built till now uh, the second problem that we faced was finding the right set of people to uh, scale that up and um, i think um, yeah i think these are the two most important things that i can think of third is definitely the money 
uh, you should be able to raise money to scale uh, your work. Thanks. Thank you, Pooja. Thank you so much. And in fact, uh, you know, uh, so what message that you would like to share with uh, people that who would like to, you know, get into to serve people, right? There are people, there, there, there are people who want to do something, but at this scale, what is what is at this scale? Somebody who wants to jump in and want to do it full time and definitely want to serve people. What is what what message do you think that you can give them? So, okay, so I feel uh, a lot of people question me why you are sacrificing so much to do this. I think I'm very selfish <laughs> when I do this, right? Like this gives me satisfaction, this brings the best in me and that is why I'm doing it. So for anyone to venture into this, I would say don't come up with a thinking that, oh, I'm sacrificing my life, I'm sacrificing money, this, that to do this because then you will not be able to keep yourself afloat for a long time. If you are jumping into it full time, I mean part time definitely you can, I feel part time to everyone, uh, apart from your job you should spend, you should give your time, money, energy for the social good, that is for everybody. But if you are taking a decision to venture full time in this, it should be for your own selfish reasons because you love to do it and don't be in a guilt phase that oh i've sacrificed so much for this like um, that will not let you keep going for a very long time so yeah that would be my message fantastic Pooja. fantastic i had an amazing time learning from you in fact the kind of experience that you have shared uh trust me there's a lot of people who are definitely gonna get an idea right and uh, this was to help the uh, people to see what they can start with there is it's, it's, it's not big, you can do it and uh, definitely the help is there, just need to step up, right? And thanks a lot for spending time with us, it's it's my honor to have you in my channel first of all and thanks for uh, you know coming and sharing with us, thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much Amanisho, I enjoyed the conversation a lot. <laughs> You're welcome, bye-bye.